In mathematics, a transcendental number is a real or complex number that is not algebraic, that is, it is not a root of a non-zero polynomial equation with rational coefficients. The best-known transcendental numbers are pi and e, though only a few classes of transcendental numbers are known. Transcendental numbers are not rare. Indeed, almost all real and complex numbers are transcendental, since the algebraic numbers are countable while the sets of real and complex numbers are both uncountable. All real transcendental numbers are irrational, since all rational numbers are algebraic. The converse is not true. Not all irrational numbers are transcendental, e.g., the square root of 2 is a rational but not a transcendental number, since it is a solution of the polynomial equation x2 minus 2 equals 0. History The name transcendental comes from Leibniz in his 1682 paper where he proved that sin is not an algebraic function of x. Euler was probably the first person to define transcendental numbers in the modern sense. Johann Heinrich Lambert conjectured that E and Pi were both transcendental numbers in his 1761 paper, proving the number Pi is irrational. Joseph Leoville first proved the existence of transcendental numbers in 1844, and in 1851 gave the first decimal examples such as the Leoville constant in which the nth digit after the decimal point is 1 if n is equal to k, for some k and 0 otherwise. In other words, the nth digit of this number is 1 only if n is one of the numbers chapter 1, equals 1, equals 2, equals 6, equals 24, etc. Leoville showed that this number is what we now call a Leoville number. This essentially means that it can be more closely approximated by rational numbers than can any irrational algebraic number. Leoville showed that all Leoville numbers are transcendental. The first number to be proven transcendental without having been specifically constructed for the purpose was E by Charles Hermite in 1873. In 1874, Georg Cantor proved that the algebraic numbers are countable and the real numbers are uncountable. He also gave a new method for constructing transcendental numbers. In 1878, Cantor published a construction that proves there are as many transcendental numbers as there are real numbers. Cantor's work established the ubiquity of transcendental numbers. In 1882, Ferdinand von Lindemann published a proof that the number pi is transcendental. He first showed that each is transcendental when a is algebraic and not zero. Then, since a pi equals minus 1 is algebraic, i pi and therefore pi must be transcendental. This approach was generalized by Carl Weierstrass to the lindemann weierstrass theorem. The transcendence of pi allowed a proof of the impossibility of several ancient geometric constructions involving compass and straight edge, including the most famous one, squaring the circle. In 1900, David Hilbert posed an influential question about transcendental numbers. Hilbert's seventh problem, if A is an algebraic number that is not zero or one, and B is an irrational algebraic number, is abnecessarily transcendental. The affirmative answer was provided in 1934 by the Delphont-Schneider theorem. This work was extended by Alan Baker in the 1960s in his work on lower bounds for linear forms in any number of logarithms. Properties The set of transcendental numbers is uncountably infinite. Since the polynomials with rational coefficients are countable, and since each such polynomial has a finite number of zeros, the algebraic numbers must also be countable. However, Cantor's diagonal argument proves that the real numbers are uncountable. Since the real numbers are the union of algebraic and transcendental numbers, they cannot both be countable. This makes the transcendental numbers uncountable. No rational number is transcendental and all real transcendental numbers are irrational. The irrational numbers contain all the real transcendental numbers in a subset of the algebraic numbers, including the quadratic irrationals and other forms of algebraic irrationals. Any non-constant algebraic function of a single variable yields a transcendental value when applied to a transcendental argument. 
For example, from knowing that pi is transcendental, we can immediately deduce that numbers such as 5 pi, square root 2, 8 and 1 7 are transcendental as well. However, an algebraic function of several variables may yield an algebraic number when applied to transcendental numbers if these numbers are not algebraically independent. For example, pi and are both transcendental, but pi plus equals 1 is obviously not. It is unknown whether pi plus e, for example, is transcendental, though at least one of pi plus e and pi e must be transcendental. More generally, for any two transcendental numbers a and b, at least one of a plus b and ab must be transcendental. To see this, consider the polynomial equals x2 minus x plus ab. If an ab were both algebraic, then this would be a polynomial with algebraic coefficients. Because algebraic numbers form an algebraically closed field, this would imply that the roots of the polynomial a and b must be algebraic. But this is a contradiction, and thus it must be the case that at least one of the coefficients is transcendental. The non-computable numbers are a strict subset of the transcendental numbers. All Liouville numbers are transcendental, but not vice versa. Any Liouville number must have unbounded partial quotients in its continued fraction expansion. Using a counting argument one can show that there exist transcendental numbers which have bounded partial quotients and hence are not Liouville numbers. Using the explicit continued fraction expansion of E, one can show that E is not a Liouville number. Kurt Mahler showed in 1953 that pi is also not a Liouville number. It is conjectured that all infinite continued fractions with bounded terms that are not eventually periodic are transcendental. Numbers proven to be transcendental. Numbers proven to be transcendental. Each if A is algebraic and non-zero. Pi, E pi, Gelfand's constant, as well as E minus bar 2 equals I I. Ab where A is algebraic but not 0 or 1, and B is a rational algebraic, in particular. The Gelfand Schneider constant, the continued fraction constant, Carl Ludwig Siegel, Sin, Cos and Tan, and the multiplicative inverses CSC, second cot, for any non zero algebraic number A. Lane if A is algebraic and not equal to 0 or 1, for any branch of the logarithm function. W if A is algebraic and non zero, for any branch of the Lambert W function. Gamma, gamma, and gamma, 0.64341054629, Cahen's constant, 0.12345678910111213141516, the Champenown constant, Omega, Chaitin's constant, the Fredholm number. More generally, any number of the form with 0 less than, beta less than 1 and beta algebraic. The aforementioned Liouville constant. More generally any number of the form with 0 less than, beta less than 1 and beta algebraic. The Prohet Thursday Morse constant. Any number for which the digits with respect to some fixed base form a Sturmian word. For beta greater than 1, where is the floor function? Possibly transcendental numbers. Numbers which have yet to be proven to be either transcendental or algebraic. Most sums, products, powers, etc. of the number pi and the number e, e.g. pi plus e, pi minus e, pi e pi e, pi pi e, pi e pi square root 2, e pi 2 are not known to be rational, algebraic irrational or transcendental. Notable exceptions are pi plus e pi, pi e pi and e pi square root n which have been proven to be transcendental. The Euler Masteroni constant gamma, Catalan's constant, also not known to be irrational, Aperi's constant, zeta, the Riemann zeta function at other odd integers, zeta, zeta, the Feigenbaum constants, delta and alpha, Mills constant, conjectures, Shanuel's conjecture. 
4. Exponentials Conjecture Sketch of a proof that E is transcendental The first proof that the base of the natural logarithms E is transcendental dates from 1873. We will now follow the strategy of David Hilbert who gave a simplification of the original proof of Charles Hermite. The idea is the following. Assume, for purpose of finding a contradiction, that E is algebraic. Then there exists a finite set of integer coefficients c0, c1, cn satisfying the equation. Now for a positive integer k, we define the following polynomial, and multiply both sides of the above equation by to arrive at the equation. This equation can be written in the form where lemma 1, for an appropriate choice of k, is a non-zero integer. Proof. Each term in P is an integer times a sum of factorials, which results from the relation which is valid for any positive integer j. It is non-zero because for every a satisfying zero less than or n, the integrand in is e minus x times a sum of terms whose lowest power of x is k plus 1 after substituting x for e x a in the integral. Then this becomes a sum of integrals of the form with k plus 1 j, and it is therefore an integer divisible by. After dividing by k, we get zero modulo. However, we can write and thus by choosing k so that k plus 1 is prime and larger than n and c0, we get that is non-zero modulo and is thus non-zero. Lemma 2. For sufficiently large k. Proof. Note that using upper bounds g and h for and on the interval 0, n, we can infer that in since it follows that which is sufficient to finish the proof of this lemma. Noting that one can choose k so that both lemmas hold we get the contradiction we needed to prove the transcendence of e. The transcendence of pi a similar strategy, different from Lindemann's original approach, can be used to show that the number pi is transcendental. Besides the gamma function and some estimates as in the proof for e, facts about symmetric polynomials play a vital role in the proof. For detailed information concerning the proofs of the transcendence of pi and e see the references and external links. Mahler's classification. Kurt Mahler in 1932 partitioned the transcendental numbers into three classes, called S, T, and U. Definition of these classes draws on an extension of the idea of a Liouville number. Measure of irrationality of a real number One way to define a Liouville number is to consider how small a given real number x makes linear polynomials qx minus p without making them exactly zero. Here p, q are integers with p, q, bounded by a positive integer h. Let m be the minimum non-zero absolute value these polynomials take and take. Omega is often called the measure of irrationality of a real number x. For rational numbers, omega equals zero and is at least one for irrational real numbers. A Liouville number is defined to have infinite measure of irrationality. Roth's theorem says that irrational real algebraic numbers have measure of irrationality 1. Measure of transcendence of a complex number Next consider the values of polynomials at a complex number x. When these polynomials have integer coefficients, degree at most n, and height at most h, with n, h being positive integers. Let m be the minimum non-zero absolute value such polynomials take at x and take. Suppose this is infinite for some minimum positive integer n. A complex number x in this case is called a u number of degree n. Now we can define omega is often called the measure of transcendence of x. If the omega are bounded, then omega is finite, and x is called an s number. If the omega are finite but unbounded, x is called a t number. x is algebraic if and only if omega equals zero. Clearly the Liouville numbers are a subset of the u numbers. William Levesque in 1953 constructed u numbers of any desired degree. The Liouville numbers and hence the u numbers are uncountable sets. They are sets of measure zero. T numbers also comprise a set of measure zero. It took about 35 years to show their existence. Wolfgang M. Schmidt in 1968 showed that examples exist. 
However, almost all complex numbers are S numbers. Mahler proved that the exponential function sends all non-zero algebraic numbers to S numbers. This shows that E is an S number and gives a proof of the transcendence of pi. The most that is known about pi is that it is not a U number. Many other transcendental numbers remain unclassified. Two numbers x. Y are called algebraically dependent if there is a non-zero polynomial P in 2 and determinates with integer coefficients such that P equals 0. There is a powerful theorem that two complex numbers that are algebraically dependent belong to the same Mahler class. This allows construction of new transcendental numbers, such as the sum of a Liouville number with E or pi. It is often speculated that S stood for the name of Mahler's teacher Karl Ludwig Siegel and that T and U are just the next two letters. Koksma's equivalent classification Jürgen Koksma in 1939 proposed another classification based on approximation by algebraic numbers. Consider the approximation of a complex number x by algebraic numbers of degree n and height h. Let alpha be an algebraic number of this finite set such that x minus alpha has the minimum positive value. Define omega asterisk and omega asterisk by, if for a small is positive integer n, omega asterisk is infinite, x is called a u asterisk number of degree n. If the omega asterisk abounded and do not converge to zero, x is called an s asterisk number, a number x is called an a asterisk number if the omega asterisk converge to zero. If the omega asterisk are all finite but unbounded, x is called a t asterisk number. Koxmas and Mahler's classifications are equivalent in that they divide the transcendental numbers into the same classes. The a asterisk numbers are the algebraic numbers. Levick's construction let it can be shown that the nth root of lambda is a u number of degree n. This construction can be improved to create an uncountable family of u numbers of degree n. Let z be the set consisting of every other power of 10 in the series above for lambda. The set of all subsets of z is uncountable. Deleting any of the subsets of Z from the series for lambda creates uncountably many distinct Liouville numbers, whose nth roots are U numbers of degree n. Type the supremum of the sequence, omega, is called the type. Almost all real numbers are S numbers of type 1, which is minimal for real S numbers. Almost all complex numbers are S numbers of type 1 half, which is also minimal. The claims of almost all numbers were conjectured by Mahler and in 1965 proved by Vladimir Sprindjuk.